All right. We got two more phyla, uh, or sorry, two more subphyla to talk about. The next subphyla we'll talk about is subphylum crustacea. And I like talking about crustacea because they're a really great organism thinking about ecdysis. Um, because remember, ecdysis means you have a hard outer shell. And in order to grow, you have to molt that shell. And you've probably had maybe crabs before or lobsters before, or at least you're familiar with them, to know they have a really hard shell. As that crab grows, that shell does not grow with it. So in order for it to shed, or sorry, in order for it to grow, it has to shed this outer shell. Remember, all of our organisms in arthropoda are like this. Our centipedes and millipedes, they have to go through ecdysis as well. Uh, our insects have to go through it. And the next group we'll talk about also go through it. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Like think about that organism. They have that hard outer shell. If they want to grow, they've got to get rid of that shell. So in Cephylum crustacea, we do see our body segments as well, uh, but we see different body segments. Uh, what we see is, we'll first start with the abdomen, uh, just because we, we've seen abdomen before. Um, so here is our abdomen. And similar to what we saw in insects, the abdomen is where a, quite a bit of the organs are found. It's a little bit different in this crayfish, but we'll, we'll stick with that for simplicity's sake. And then our second segment, so there are only two segments, is something called the cephalothorax. So cephalo, this means head. That's kind of like the Latin root for head. And then thorax. So it's essentially the head and thorax combined. And if you look at this picture, you can kind of see that, that this head region is just part of the same body segment as this thorax. They're not two separated things. They're all together. You are going to still have all your sensory organs in the cephalothorax. You have all of your limb attachment in the cephalothorax. So the functions of the head and thorax are still there. It's just instead of being two independently moving sections, they're combined. Think of your body. We have a head and you could think of uh, your chest cavity as your thorax. Like ours move independently, but for them, that is one structure. These guys thinking about hexapodes with their uh, six feet and millipedes and centipedes with a whole lot more feet, these guys have 10 appendages. Now, some of them might be modified. So you can see with this one, um, these are duplicated on the other side of the body. It has four or times two, so eight typical appendages. And then they do have some modified appendages that in the case of this crayfish is a um, is pinchers for, for eating and for defense, but 10 appendages nonetheless. Now, some organisms you may have written down, uh, crabs and lobsters and crayfish, uh, all of those are totally correct. And um, some other organisms, s shrimp, so kind of look similar to crayfish, so you could probably figure that one out. Uh, roly polies. I just like mentioning these because I like roly polies. Uh, so not all crustaceans are found in the water. So up here are roly polies. Um, that is maybe not their scientific name. They're also called pill bugs. But you're going to see roly polies, right? Because that's what we call them. Um, and, and if you tell a scientist, oh, I saw a roly poly, they know what you're talking about. So our roly polies, are, they're kind of different because you notice they have a little bit more limbs. It's because some of them are modified and they're a weird exception. But just know they're crustaceans. They are crustaceans. Uh, and then we also have barnacles. And I'm so excited to talk about barnacles because they're probably my favorite organism, or at least they have my favorite fun facts. So you have seen barnacles before, but you probably haven't seen the living organism. More than likely what you've seen is you've seen, um, if you look at a dock or you look at a boat or even on like turtle shells and whales, they have all these bumps and they're really, really hard bumps. Those organisms are barnacles, but that's like its outer shell. On the inside is the actual organism. And on this bottom picture, the, the picture to the left um, shows you a really great picture of the actual animal inside of that shell. 
and these guys are filter feeders. So uh, what you see is all of these, they're not necessarily appendages, they're just like feeding apparatuses. And you can see these small little hairs um, on these feeding apparatuses. And what they do is they literally kind of wave around in the water column and they grab stuff. So they might grab plankton and um, protists, maybe some larvae of stuff, but they're, they're catching whatever they can. Now these are pretty small organisms, but they're still trying to catch whatever they can. Now, here's my funnest fun fact that I know about any animal. Uh, you may have noticed that on here it um, has labeled its penis, and this is important. So barnacles, very small organisms, they're in the shell, they're stuck in place. There's other organisms like that, right? There's oysters, um, <laughs> clams, other shelled organisms, same situation. They're kind of stuck in one place. What clams do is they release their egg and sperm just into the water. And there's just hopes that egg will find sperm and they'll make a baby clam. Barnacles didn't evolve that way. Instead, the way barnacles evolved was their <laughs> penis literally got longer. So if you think about all these barnacles hanging out, that <laughs> the male is literally searching for females around it. And so there's a video and you'll watch the video in a moment. It's literally searching for nearby females and trying to pass on its sperm to the eggs of surrounding females. Well, you could probably imagine that there's an evolutionary advantage to having a longer penis. The longer your penis is, the more females you can inseminate, right? Maybe if it's really small, you can only um, fertilize the females that are directly around you. But the longer it is, you might be able to get two or three back, four barnacles back, five barnacles back. So there's an actual evolutionary advantage. Now here's where the fun fact comes. If that wasn't fun enough for you, so, the organism that has the largest penis in the world is a blue whale. Makes sense. It's also the largest organism in the world. But the barnacle has the largest penis to body size ratio. Its penis can be up to nine times longer than its body, which is insane, right? We don't see organisms that have those kind of ratios. So seven to nine times larger than its body. And again, it's just been natural selection favoring this. Um, the longer it is, the more uh, females and the more eggs that you can fertilize passing on those traits generation after generation. So there you go. That's your fun fact of the day. And tell everyone that because it's just the coolest thing. Now, this video that's going to pop up in a little bit, you've seen the link here on the slide. Um, it's a very short video, but it shows like a group of barnacles and you can just see this penis in action where it's just, it's just looking for females. Again, the longer it is, the higher likelihood of reproductive success. And that's really what I want to want you to get out of this. Um, so go ahead and pause here, kind of keep everything I've just said in mind. There's a link popping up above me um, that takes you to this video. Go watch that first before coming back. Well, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that little slice of heaven uh, that is barnacle reproduction. Uh, and I hope you never look at a barnacle the same way. I actually hope you congratulate it uh, next time you see one. All right, one more subphylum we'll talk about. There are quite a few other subphyla, but the ones I'm focusing on are the ones that you're familiar with. Maybe you're not familiar with the name, but you're definitely familiar with the organisms. So the last subphylum we'll talk about is subphylum Chelicerata which is probably your favorite, uh, right, the spiders. Uh, but not just spiders, uh, scorpions, ticks, and oddly, horseshoe crabs. Horseshoe crabs aren't a crab, but they're a spider, but they're called a crab. Um, this is what happens when we give organisms names before we actually know where they fit uh, phylogenetically with other organisms. Uh, so horseshoe crabs, and I'll actually show you why a horseshoe crab is uh, in a moment. So similar to our crustaceans, uh, subphylum Chelicerata only has two body segments. They have the abdomen. Again, a lot of our organs are found in the abdomen. And then they have the cephalothorax. Again, that cephalothorax is the head and thorax region 
all in one body segment. So you have the sensory organs, you have limb attachment, all of that is in one body segment. Now you're familiar with the spiders with eight appendages, but again, this does include a couple other organisms that do have 10 appendages. So it's just a range. If we were to go to individual classes, you know, there is a class for just spiders. There is a class, oh, excuse me. Uh, there is a class for scorpions, etc. Now the name subphylum Chelicerata, like where, where does that come from? Um, and the Chelicerata, that name comes from what is referred to as the feeding appendages. So on all organisms in the subphylum, whether we're talking about ticks or spiders or like we have here, the horseshoe crabs, they all have two of their appendages uh, have changed over time where they're no longer used for movement, but they're used for feeding. Uh, in spiders, these got modified even more. They're still used for feeding, but specifically, uh, they are the fangs, the venomous fangs. They bite into something, they release a venom or release a poison uh, into that organism. And you can see that in this uh, tarantula on the top right. Now on the bottom left, this is what the bottom of a horseshoe crab looks like. Uh, and it does not look very crab-like, uh, or at least you can definitely see its similarities with spiders. But very specifically, so right in here is its mouth. And the chelicerae are these two itty bitty arms right here. So it's really at the front of the organism. So these guys are, they, they kind of like swim slash walk on the bottom uh, of the uh, ocean floor. And these little, <laughs> they're so cute. Uh, I have an organism, uh, uh, I have an organism on campus, but you guys actually might find these if you go to the beach. You have these two little uh, feeding appendages. They're not like pinchers. They're not designed to immobilize prey or anything. What they're designed to do is just kind of pick things up and just kind of shove it into their mouth. They're kind of like its forks. Uh, so they're just used to, to push things into its mouth. So again, they have these specialized appendages just used for feeding. Whether it's picking things up like the horseshoe crab, or whether it's used um, for inserting a venom, which then immobilizes prey to be used for eating. And so that's kind of what ties this subphylum together, are um, these specialized appendages not used for movement, uh, only used for feeding. Last thing I want to show you guys uh, is this YouTube video. So it's actually the last thing uh, of this lecture as well that actually talks about horseshoe crabs. Uh, it's really cool because we, uh, as human society, use horseshoe crabs in our healthcare field. Um, their blood, uh, which is blue by the way, and the video talks about why it's blue, is used uh, when it comes to testing medications, uh, which is actually really cool. It's unfortunate because it has been decimating the horseshoe crab population. You know humans, if anything, we can, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it and doesn't really care what happens to the environment. Um, but anyway, just take a look at this video because it's really cool how our healthcare industry relies so much on the organisms, the plants, the bacteria, the animals in our environment for a lot of the, the luxuries um, that we have in healthcare. So um, I won't say pause here because again, this is the last thing. So just make sure before you kind of move on to future videos to take a look at that video um, that is popping up here.